It's time for Florida State football. This is the Jimbo Fisher Show. The Jimbo Fisher Show is brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Ram, come in and get a great deal on the best trucks during Ram Power Days. Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Block along with Coach Fisher. Coach, congratulations. You go on the road, pick up a win over a, a Duke team, really got off to a great start on a beautiful day for football, played well. We did. Duke has been playing very well at 4-2, and two, and we were very efficient on offense. Had two 12-play drives right out of the bat, 8 the clock up. Defense was on the field one drive in the first half. Guys executed well. Defense gave up a little drive in the second half, but did a great job. And uh, what we had to do, though, we had the one mistake in the second drive that cost us uh, – a holding call, and we got behind the chains, and we had and we made a mistake on third down, the one that few that James made on the day, and then we had another good drive. We had a penalty on two other drives, but moving the football very efficiently, got to clean some things up. A couple, I'll, I'll dispute on a couple calls. I, and I hate to say that, but I I do because it cost us some points. But at the same time, we had to finish. We had four drives of ten plays or more, which is excellent efficiency, kept the defense off the field, but we got to finish them with point, more points than which we did. The result is 17 to 10 victory for Florida State. We'll take a look at the first half highlights when we come back. Stay with us. We are just getting started here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, the way it works, you don't face Duke all that often, but I know you know David Cutcliffe from going way back in the SEC days. <laughs> I mean, we were laughing about that before the game, all the way, how the game's changed and how we like watching each other's film a lot because it gives us ideas because everybody's so different on offense now. It, it, it's a good deal. But, it, as it, you know, I understand we didn't get a good return here. Derwin dropped that ball and screwed the timing of it up. But, you know, right here, nice nice run up inside, great block by Jacquez. We got the running game going, Cam Akers there. Uh, we wanted to pull that when he took it from us. But then we get – this is the key play in that first drive. Third and one, they bunched the box. But we knew they did that. And there was going to be a chance to hit that thing and bounce it. And we had worked on that during the week. And he came out of there and he made two outstanding runs. But, James, well, you talk about sharp. He was really sharp in the game at 18 of 21. But his first seven for seven, he had hit. Nice play action here. Did a great job moving, making decisions, whether running it, throwing it – the out, throwing the crossing route, dumping to the tight end, him keeping it, did a great job moving the pocket right here. Now a nice screen. Again, good to see Amir Rasul win the game right here. If we get that cut block and get a seal inside, Amir can split that thing. We were close on a couple of those screens, back screens that could have been really good. Nice run here by Cam Akers up inside, learning to run more physical. Great job inside by our guys. There's Ryan Izzo making a block. Uh, you know, Everly and Derek Kelly and all those guys. Right here, another great deal. Good big picture read right here. They're playing the tight end. He could have dumped it for three, but he pumped it, got behind him, and made about eight. Now we get, boy, I make that cut back inside there, three. That was one I'm, I was one I'm gonna wish he had back. He made a nice run there, but he could have popped that one in the side right off the bat. And here, nice job by, by Jacquez. Jacquez being physical, our offensive line right there, Everly, like I say, uh, Cole Minshew, uh, Len, Ricky Leonard, those guys did a good job inside running that football, especially early in the football game. And then as it went on, just kept pounding. Here, great read, he reads the backside read. We had the front side called, he reads the safeties. Finds the one-on-one -on, -one on the backside, and Auden Tate does a great job on the slant and finishing off the play and getting in there. We got the first drive and, and scored a touchdown. That was outstanding. Ricky, again, was, was perfect on the day and uh, did a good job. All right, here, the first drive. They run this draw. Now, we, we got to do a better job with our great job there by Josh Schwitt, who I thought was outstanding. Derek Noddy also had a really good day. Derek's played great football all year. Our Derek there makes a breakup, and our backers plugging that draw need to do a better job. That's where that issue was coming on the lead draw. Now, but third down right there, we got play. We had a guy buzzing in the flat, didn't quite get out there in time, and we got a buzz. We were mixing up the coverages. The great job again, Josh Sweat setting the edge. Matthew Thomas outside getting leverage on the football. Did a good job. Nice play by Josh there, really good play. Uh, they come back, throw a nice little spacing short. They were very patient on the thing, taking an eating clock, controlled passing game. This was a this fat this first half flew by. I mean flew by. Now great play. They, that's the play that Wake Forest hit on us that come out the gate. Remember they reviewed and had a big play on? We read it here in man, they picked it, blocked it. But then Derwin and the rat coverage come down and, and cross read it and made a big time play. Their punter was outstanding on the day too. Uh, Tavares does a good job here, fair catching the ball and we get it back. And then we go back on another 12 play. Nice play action right here. Looks at the tight end, outs covered, comes back to his third receiver, finding a crossing route to Nooney and, and getting him back involved. And, you know, Jane just keeps getting better and better making the decisions. Here we are, nice stretch play. Good job getting to the edge. 
and Jacquez lowering those pads and running like he's 230, 35 pounds. I mean, I thought he was outstanding in the game today. Uh, great job here, nice play act. I mean, uh, run up inside, very good job there. Josh Ball getting one of his first starts ever and, and did a nice job in the game. There's Cam, nice another little play action. Find him one, two, and it comes back to the crossing route number three again. I mean, James processing the game, running, throwing, making really good decisions here right now. Here he is, finds the one-on-one -on -one in the flat. Again, that guy, you know, Cam on our backs catch the ball so well, and they're hard to get down in the flat right there. Does a nice job of getting the ball out of his hands. Great read. Here, a nice little counter play coming back. Great job by Ryan Izzo on the cut. The receiver's got to keep going and run off. Don't, don't, don't stop. Don't get lazy right there on us. They can keep cleaning that out. Cam's running the football very well. Now here we get the holding call on Ricky Leonard right there. He gets that little tug, and they're going to call that every time. And that's that's when you drive like that. Now we're behind the chains, but we come back and get 11 here, and we get back to second and nine. Nice run by Cam. Gets inside. We get it back to second. Excuse me, second and 11. Got nine yards on the play. Then right here they go to play. And then watch here. James is taking off. They they ran a coverage on a man under coverage. If you could split that thing, we would teach him to run. If we could have hit that right there, we come out. Now, this is the one mistake James made. He was wrong, Nooney was right, he hooked it in. They got it covered, he's got to dump it down to the little crosser, get a shorter field goal, and we get out of there. It was third and long, and he tried to get too much of it, and that was just a, a, a young mistake that he can't make. Now, right there, we got we can't let that ball get cut back. We got to play that ball inside out. D-Jack's got to make that play. It was set up for him to make about a one yard gain right there. Uh, Derek Noddy, right there, good job right there. Now there's Matthew back in, D-Jack getting back in there on that one. Now they pop the screen out here and cross block it. We got to be more aggressive at the corner right there. McFadden's got to take that block on and knock it back. Like the week before, he did a great job of that. And that time they got a block on us. Now they're popping that draw. Here we're getting now. This is Burns. He got to make this play. Burns should have been hitting this play for a one yard gain right to the line of scrimmage. When the blitz, he dropped off. Should have refit in the B gap and didn't make the play. All right, good talk by who is that? T Mac coming across right there. Now they run the seal. Now watch them play it inside out here. Now they leverage the football. That's the same play that popped out a minute ago. Did a great job of getting back and leveraging the football. Derek Naughty again getting a rush. Great job. We got our hands sweating and burns and those guys batted, I don't know, three or four balls in the game that were big plays. That the length, and not just because they're getting a quarterback draw. Great job by Kane Doe playing off two blockers. Matthew Thomas helped him right there. And Naughty, if you don't see it, squeezed back on the other side. Matthew Thomas on, uh, that's just a great throw and catch. You couldn't cover him any better. The size got Nate and Matthew Thomas was in the guy's face and, and did a good job pulling off the quarterback, not getting a late hit. There's D Jack playing the draw. Did a great job of plugging at that time. Great job of seeing them inside. Now they run the screen on third down. About get it. Nate sees it, pulls back off. But we got to get the backer aligned wider to help make that a little tighter throw. And then they get a field goal. And then so they had a fit. We had a 12 play. Then they had like a three, a five play. Then we had a 12 play. And they had a 15 play. Half's about over. Now this is we get a holding call here, which I do not agree with. Guy was falling down. He buries him. I don't know what else you want him to do. And that sets us back. Now we come back and get eight, nine right here. So we had a nice run on that play. That was, that was going. We was going for another drive. And we get eight back here, so we're second 12. We pop it again, come back with another counter. We get the edge, read it, great job. Got a runoff out there, but we get third and about four, and we get and they, they play us down right here, and we come up a yard short. It's a good read. They did the corner just came off the play, and they got it right there, and we ended up a yard short on fourth and one. We got to punt it. It all got back to the penalty, which is tough. Now, you talk about a weapon on the day. Logan Tyler, average 50-some yards, 52 yards a punt, and I mean was perfect on the day. What an outstanding day. Hit some big ones coming off his goal. There's the draw again. There, but see, we got we can't turn our shoulder right there at linebacker. You can't. You got to take that thing on square and hit that thing in the back because there's no hole there. We got to be more physical at that play right there. Great job again. Same thing. Getting out of our lanes, back of alignment. We got to plug that thing. We got to plug that thing. That's why they were finding success with that draw. We got to stop the second half. Now back inside right here. Again, got to plug it again. Emmett Rice comes over and makes a play from the other side. Now they get the draw. Now we did a good job. Our alignment and the backer plugged at that time on the quarterback draw. On the draw, what you got to do is squeeze those lanes down, pressure the inside number. Now, here we are, one of the few times that we got out of lane right here on a third down, and, and uh, we got to cover that tight end. The zone, now they get a trick play, big play in the game right here. I thought as big a play as we had too was interception right here by Emmett Rice. Uh, we got back, they underthrew it just a hair, but when you do those trick plays, they're never going to be executed just perfectly. We had the safety coming over and him coming over, and they got there. Nice run right here by Cam. Gets a nice uh, stretch play in and out. You can see his speed, his agility, the ability to break tackles, his vision just getting better and better as we're running that football. Nice play action again. We find it. Now we got DJ Matthews with his first catch. We had a shot play down the sideline. Could have went ahead and took it, but he saw DJ, made a good play. Now we get the zone play right. We get, we get out leverage right here inside, but nice turn up. See, all of a sudden that becomes a four yard gain instead of a two yard loss. This is right here. We, they called us for an illegal formation. Our tight end is definitely a yard and a half off the ball. He was on the ball at a yard. Uh, 
We'll let's see how they say, but that's a big play. We're down to 14 yard line and then they bring the blitz. We have to dump it off and lose the drive. So the two drives, we move it and have the pick. Then we have the hold and miss it. And then we have the big play here. We're down to the 14 again. We only had it four times the first half. And uh, they called us for an illegal formation, which I thought the tight end was definitely off the ball. And you know, we'll see what they have to say. And that was big because you only didn't have the ball much. And that's the thing, that's the frustrating thing. When you have those long drives, we had to pick, which ate up time. But then that drive there was also a great one. We were down there and, and we needed, couldn't pick it up. We had two critical penalties right there that uh, cost us and uh, we got to do a better job. But you have the lead at intermission and it was really, uh, we go yeah. back to the first drive as you look at the big play in the first half. Jacquez Patrick, a theme for the day, ran really tough. It's a third and one, uh, you know, and uh, you talk about a, a highlight type play. He was fighting for the tough yards. He was, and when they bunch, when they squat everybody inside, that ball naturally will hit and bounce. And we worked on that and he did a good job and he lowered his pads and his size took over and did a great job. And it's, even though you say you're lining, one of them, on one of them got blown back. The other two, they're just wadded people up in there and it bounced. But it, the thing about that, when you hit it and they squeeze and you bounce, you can create big plays. Came up just shy of a 100-yard game that uh, Patrick Ham went over 100, but a good day on the ground for FSU. Stay with us. We'll come back and take a look at the second half highlights right after this. Dalvin Cook running left for the 30. Dalvin Cook breaks a tackle to the 40. Outside the numbers for the 50. Dalvin Cook down the sideline. Gets a block downfield. Cook to the 10. 5, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown. Two plays and two scores. DeAndre Francois to throw for the first time. He wants a bomb. He's got Auden Tate. Caught. Underthrown, or it would have been another touchdown for Auden Tate. Dalvin Cook gets the handoff, rushes his right. He is going to bring a tackle to the five, outside the up. He's to the goal line, touchdown FSU. Cook scored two today. Francois left alone in the flat as Dalvin Cook. Inside the 30 with a cutback. Still on his feet. And finally, gang tackles. Hands the ball to the fullback, Freddie Stevenson. He roots his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. Here's the snap, out of the gun. Francois looking, firing to the right side. Caught ball, inside the five, three, two, one. Touchdown FSU, touchdown Bobo Wilson, touchdown Florida State. Matt met in the backfield. Frederick Jones, the red shirt sophomore, doing his uncle proud. Takes the snap, looks to his left, still looking, throws a fade route down the rear sideline. Intercepted, picked off by the Tavares McFadden. That's his third pick of the season. Ground game for Florida State. Whereas Patrick turns the corner down the sideline. Inside the 30. Five formation. A handoff to Freddie Stevenson. He's got the belly dive. Touchdown, Florida State. Second touchdown of the day by Freddie Stevenson. Shotgun formation. Quentin Flowers drops the throw near sideline. Throws it downfield toward Marquez. White. It's going to be intercepted in the three yard line. Florida State's got the second takeaway of the game. That was, I believe, Nate Andrews. It was. This time it's Patrick. He's into the secondary. Into the red zone, running through tackles to the 14 yard line. Davis Saunders with H back tight end. Hand off Pat Doyle. Oh, hand to Patrick running left. He will score untouched. Fake the belly dive to the fullback. That's burned the Bulls twice. And Jacquez Patrick has a touchdown today. Kicker potentially to beat. No, he gets dragged down from behind. Andre Francois calling his number. Gets daylight to the 30, to the 25, to the 15, to the 10, 5, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Florida State. Running for the touchdown, DeAndre Francois. What a day for Dalvin Cook and a statement for Jimbo Fisher's team.
Welcome back. Second half, uh, we move to this action. And, Coach, uh, Duke gets the ball first, but you were able to get a good stop and get the ball. We really were. We got a stop. They got one first down, I believe, and then we got it off here. Nice play on the sprint out right here. They get it on a third. They ran like a little pick block route, kind of similar to what we do, and it's, it's very hard to stop right there when you pick it off and when they pick you like that. And uh, nothing you can do. And then they're controlling it. But then we start to Great job by Derwin playing inside, coming down from the safety position. Derwin had not a very good game in the game. Here, they're trying to run the quarterback. We did such a much better job in the second half on the draw. Great job, Naughty. But the backers were plugging it. And that allowed the lineman to come off and make the play. Here they are in a flat route. Great job on third down. A.J. Westbrook, who really had a good game. Got banged up at the end, but he graded out very well and played very well in the game. Punt, boy, we're almost getting there. Had a chance to get that. We got it back in. Got to take a chance and go get that ball. Got to take a chance and go get that ball. That's a tough one on T-Mac. But here we come back. Our first drive, we go 90. We go almost 90 yards right here. Great run right here by Jock West coming off the goal line. Pops it up out of there. Pop another one on third down. This is a third and four or five. We changed it up. We saw what they were in. He checked out of it. Got us to the run and uh, did a nice job. Here we go. Nice nice stretch run right there by three. Got to get a little more. Got to press that thing front side and get a little north south just a hair quicker. And then here it is. See when they bunch and they wad that thing up and then the angles they come at. And I'm like, if we actually are receivers, we should have ran off right there. That thing could have popped for a touchdown. That thing had a chance to pop for a touchdown. All right, now we go one on one. We get Tate one on one and they grab him and hold him. And anytime we wanted to get him one on one, we were going to try and get him there and get him the ball. Uh, here they come and play action. We come back. Nice job right here. Now we got a great job, great throw. I mean, we got to score. We got the whole side of the field. We got to press. What you got to do, we're trying out, you got to press that guy back inside, give him a little something, and then you can score on that play. And right here, we get a nice little run here on first down. Don't get much. Second down, we get pressure right here. This is a disappointing one. They get the sack. You'll see we have a, uh, two guys open right out here, and we overset the thing inside, one of our guards, and uh, we didn't get it out of there. But now we pop a counter back with third and long. We want to get up by a touchdown. So we pop a, got a nice short field goal here. Got a great drive, though. Got 11 play drive coming out the second half, just like we started the first half. Kicked a field goal. Should have had a touchdown. And, uh, you know, we had a chance to score on the uh, short yardage play, had a chance to score on the on the, on the indie play, a little play action, and then at the end right there, we missed a block. And, but again, great job by Brian Burns. Those guys, Burns, he didn't get any sack, but he batted some balls down, and it was really good. Really good. Uh, now this, we lost contain. This is complete up front, and then in the back end, we gotta have, Matthew's gotta be in two Tampa all the way back, and then if we force the safety to two on one thing, if he's back there, it allows Westbrook to stay on that, but the big thing, we can't let him get out of it. We had him third and 17, and we lost contain. We had the loop stunt with the end looping around free, perfect for a sack, and he just takes a bad angle, and our inside guy, and uh, doesn't make it. Now, they, they, and they got momentum now. This is, this is really big what our defense did. Even though they give up this drive, you'll see in a minute, and offensively, we came back, but we lost momentum in the game here. It's the only time in the game I thought we lost it here for about a series, and they pop a, a zone where I miss a linebacker's got to squeeze that back and make that play, and then we come back right here, first play. You get, now we're running that football, now we're getting that play action, Jonathan Vickers. Great to see him, he's been blocking excellently. Now we're getting the ball in the passing game, makes a nice 20-some yard gain right off the bat. Hits a nice play coming up through there. Now right here, we missed the block. See, we should have double cracked it. We double cracked that, Tate's gonna make a first down. Now we end up third and long, and uh, right here, the pressure, he's getting ready to throw this ball away, and he gets hit as he's throwing it. You can see he's trying to throw it just past the line of scrimmage, and this is, our defense comes up huge here. We get a big tackle here. Uh, we, get, we get the guy on the ground. And then uh, our defense, sudden change, does an outstanding job with the screen tied 10 to 10. They got the ball at midfield. And there, there we are playing that zone. I'm playing the draw again, nowhere to go. Pressing it, our defense was outstanding right here in this drive and played their tails off as they did the rest of the time. Great, again, there's the, on that sprint out they had hit earlier, we played it, matched it up, got the edge pressure, got it batted down. And uh, that was an outstanding job by our guys because that was a, a drive up there on that. We had moved up to midfield. Now we take a heck of a drive here offensively, come right back and take the momentum back. That's why I was proud. Here's a counter play coming outside Jock West. We got to get that guy down. They lined up offsides. We got a nice gain here. We got, so we just took the first and five and took the other down. Inside zone play, running it north-south. Did a really nice job right here. Then came back, got the counter again. Got to get up inside. We missed a block right there on the edge. That was critical that uh, we, needed to, we needed to get cleaned up. And then this is a big third down. He makes, James makes the one-on-one -on -one read, finds it out there, finds Nooney one-on-one -on -one in the flat. They pick up the blitz, the backs, the line pick up the all-out blitz, and James goes right to his read. Great job. They play naked here, but you know what? This is great. All of a sudden, that's a three-yard gain. Before, that's a no gain or a loss. You know, just the maturity to dump that thing in the flat, find it. Now here, we overth I overthought ourselves. We should have ran the reverse. <laughs> they didn't play the reverse the first time. They were over pursuing everything in the running game. That's how we were getting those naked. So we thought we could get one and I'd be daggum. We overthought ourselves, but right here. Now, 
You talk about throwing a strike with a guy beating right down the thing, and I thought, I still, I know, we'll see how that looks at target. Now, I thought he got, I didn't like that right there. Now we find a crack, we miss the crack block inside. If we do, that's when he has a chance to score. And he does score here on the next short yardage player. Our offensive line come off the football. Watch Vickers, watch Auden Tate get the cut on the backside on the D lineman. And he runs through an arm tackle. And then there's Cam Makers finally getting that, that touchdown running. Not just big plays, but finishing it with a big run and a touchdown. That's the things we've been missing. We're on, you know, with the big play earlier, just not putting it in the end zone. I mean, guys are making great plays. We just got to finish a little harder, a little better. That was an outstanding drive, 17 to 10. We got him backed up. Now this is this disappointment. Matthew should be all over that play. That that's a that's a base route into that coverage which we had set. And he's got to squeeze that, and make that throw a lot tighter. Now here, great job. This time they played it. Now he played the back, and an outstanding play by Matthew right there. That's a seven-yard loss, and it's a big play. Sets him back behind the sticks. Now they find they have to get part of it back. We can't let that guy inside. And Matthew gets him on the ground. They're third down right here, third and long, and. Uh, big sack and hit right there. There's Josh Sweat again. He didn't get the sack, but he made the hit. Now they get the punt. And then here, you'll see our guy right here knock their guy right there into their guy, and they called us for holding. It was, it was a block. Now, it doesn't have an effect, but it puts us back inside the five-yard line, which is huge. Now we get a nice run right here on the counter play. Great north-south. We've been bouncing outside. They played it. He saw it, stuck it inside. Outstanding job by number nine, running back back inside. And well, you feel so good giving him the football. Now, here's the one. We get the holding call right here. This is the disappointment because we're about to put the game away. We're at four minutes. We break it all the way up to the 50-yard line. Big run. We get the holding call right there, which calls us back. And, you know, we'll see. Then we third down. We end up third and long. We didn't want to throw it right there. Third backed up. Third and deep long. And make them punt because our defense had done an outstanding job on the day. The holding call is what killed. But you talk about an outstanding punt. Watch this. Look at the coverage. Guy's leveraging the ball. He hits it 60 some yards on his longest punts ever. Uh, great job, let that thing roll. We got him pinned back. We do a great job. Bears Burnsy making that ball come out. Boy, I mean, just a hair. Our T Max gonna have him a pick right there. Good job of getting pressure. Our pressure was getting better. They get sprint. Look at second contain. Matthew, that's huge. Getting a second contain wrapper, which gets a guy in his face to make that throw and as a contested throw. And uh, right here, we get missed a punt. Great job of, of four. T Mac getting uh, 23 out of the way. And we popped the first play for seven yards. This is this one that drives a disappointment, right? We're going to put this game away. We got second and three. And it's one of the few mistakes we make at running back. We just missed a cut on second down. Then we go to third down, and right, we missed a crack black block. We missed a crack. We end up a yard short. But on second down, we had second and three. We cut it back. If we stick it in the front side B, we got the first down. We can run the clock out and end the game. And that's something we got to do a better job of in that four minute situation. So we'd ran the ball outstanding all day. And our backs have been outstanding. But here we go. Good job in the back. Now, this, this is critical. Got to get this guy on the ground. Two missed tackles by Kyle Myers and Levante there. That You get him on the ground, and plus he was inbound. They called him out. He actually hit inbounds right there. We'll see that. You can see on his knee. And then we give up the middle read, which we're in complete zone. We had a guy leave a zone. Got to sit in there and stay. Got to sit in there and stay. Uh, but look at the pressure. That's huge by Josh Sweat. And if we could have got the other guy down, that would have ate about 18 seconds off the clock because they were all downfield on that, and we missed that tackle. But he's still inbounds. They get a read right here. Two, not enough pressure on that one. Broke a tackle, and this is where that ball should not have got in there either. We, we, we got guys there to make plays, just got to make the play, got to finish. Now they get it right here, too much uh, cushion right there, but luckily we got it stripped out of there. And then we get down there, two nice plays right here. We get the last play, we're playing back there. Uh, we got two guys back, we got it doubled, did a great job, getting great defense. They're seven and four. Uh, Erman Lang gets it knocked down and we get a great win on the road. And anytime you get a win, like I say, winning's hard. And this is, this league, from top, you go look at Syracuse beats Clemson. Boston College beats Louisville. Uh, Wake Forest is playing everybody, played us well, played Clemson well. NC State, who's playing so well in this leg right now. Pitt's playing out. This league is so good right now. Georgia Tech, Miami, the game they had yesterday. Every week you play in this league, it's a battle. And it's well coached, it's well played, and uh, we got to keep getting better. I, we had four drives of over 10 players or more. Our defense only gave up 10 points, and we still are – not close to satisfy with what we got. We should have scored about 34 points in the game because we had limited drives. We only had eight drives in the game. And we got to eliminate a couple penalties, one interception, and we got to take a couple of those big plays and finish. And on defense, had a couple of opportunities that we gave up. But kicking game was very good again on the day. Ricky was good. Our punting was good. We're getting better. And, uh, you know, the score of this game is not indicative as, as, as well as we played at times in the football game. But that's football. And you had to battle through it. We did it on the road again. 
Great job. James Blackman again, two big third down throws and a game-winning drive. And uh, we're getting better, and Cam Akers finishes off with another great run. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The big play of the second half, I mean, two of them really on the on the adjust to, to Nooney and then hitting Ryan Izzo with that. Pass. It was hitting it in Ryan Izzo and making that. And then the other thing was our defense getting to stop with a sudden change. It's 10 to 10. We made the mistake on the pick, and them getting a big third down, you know, getting three and out right there at midfield, our defense. Our guys kept rising up. They're competing well. We're on the verge of continuing to really play good football. Got to turn the page yet again. Louisville comes to town this week. We'll talk about uh, the team that features the uh, reigning Heisman Trophy winner when we come back. Stay with us. Today's final stats are brought to you by Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Shop ChooseNissan.com, innovation that excites. Inside the Helmet is brought to you by Hyundai. Logan Tyler, uh, I'm a sophomore from Nixon, Missouri, and I'm a kicker punter. Yeah, I played soccer, football, basketball, baseball. Um, you know, if there's winning and losing involved, I was, I was playing with it. I had two older brothers and two older sisters, so competition was a part of my life growing up. Every time I go home, they're there, play cornhole, play bocce ball, play anything, you know, basketball in the driveway, anything. Always, always competition. My dad um, was a, a big one to me just because of the sacrifices he made for our family. Um, didn't come from much and, and put a lot on the line. And Coach Fisher told a story last night about how his dad was his hero and you know a lot of the same things that he said uh, resonated with me and, and the, the way that my dad raised me. Um, and it just, you know, he's just always been a, a very stand-up guy and just uh, always tried his best to show me how to do the right things and treat people the right way. And he's definitely, definitely one of my biggest heroes. Feels like a big town, but it has a lot of small town vibes. Everybody kind of knows everybody. It's kind of country mixed in with a little bit of city. Um, we're a suburb, but we're very kind of rural um, with that. And so it's it's nice though. Um, you go to school and you know you pretty much know everybody. It was it was nice coming to Florida from Missouri. Uh, the the temperature is a lot higher here. Uh, the humidity is a lot higher here. I walk outside, walk my dog, and break a sweat. Uh, it's not not like Missouri, but it's very very nice. I I like the like the transition a lot. Yeah, I grew up a Missouri Tigers fan just because that's, that was the closest school to me. And then um, my freshman year of high school, I was looking up colleges that I wanted to go to, not even sure if I was gonna be able to play football or anything. We needed to have a good med medical program and I wanted them to have, um, I wanted them to be in the South and have a good rich tradition with football. And so Florida State kind of fit all three of those criteria. Um, and then I was lucky enough to get recruited and they had a spot for me. I'm majoring in psychology with a minor in uh, biology and chemistry. And so I'm going to be a physician, physician's assistant, a PA, for six to eight years. And then I'm gonna go back to school and eventually become an orthopedic surgeon. It's just kind of always been something I've always had a passion about, just helping people. And um, you know, I could, it can help me stay connected in sports. Cause I mean, like I said, competition is my life. You know, be a, a, maybe a college sports teams be a surgeon or something like that, but I've always just been drawn to it, um, you know, helping other people. Um, I've had two surgeries now, so I, I know their abilities help the, the players and stuff recover faster, and it's just been something I've always had a passion about. Study, I guess. <laughs> Study, watch movies. I'm a big movie guy. I'm down to just spend an entire day, if I have a day off, just spend an entire day in my bed, just watch movies, just veg out, hang out. When you're in high school, you're growing up, you know, you have everything kind of set for you. You have your schedule, you have your meals planned. Whenever you get to college, you don't have any of that for you. Um, you know, the people here at the athletics, they, they get you set up with academic stuff and athletic stuff, and that's pretty much it. You have to kind of figure everything else out on your own, you know, where to eat, how much money you need to spend on food, how much money you need to spend on clothes, and just kind of the whole life part of it. Um, it just kind of got thrown at me really fast last year. Uh, luckily in the spring I kind of got to slow down, wasn't in season, kind of got to get used to being in college first and then spring football hit. Obviously you have the blessings, you know, you get to come to a school, your tuition is paid for, 
um, you know, you, you have all this, these wonderful facilities, you know, you get all the gear, you get to travel everywhere and play football, you know, I get to do what I love, but it, it doesn't come with no price. You know, you, whenever you go out with your friends or whatever, you have to be mindful about what you're doing, who's watching you, your, your time is such a, a price you have to pay because, you know, like I said, you asked what I do in my free time, I said study because I don't really have free time. Any free time is devoted to school, um, and so it just comes with it, and you, you got to accept it. At times, it gets annoying, it gets a little overbearing. You know, sometimes you just feel like you need a break, but it's uh, it's what you gotta what you gotta do. It's the price you pay. Tallahassee, there is no bigger fan base than the Florida State Seminoles. Before home games, the Knolls have a unique way of preparing for their team that you don't want to miss. The night before each home game, FSU hosts a Friday night block party. It's a tailgate party out of this world with performing artists right in the shadow of Dope Campbell Stadium in the heart of College Town. It's something that me and my staff started about seven years ago. We were sitting around trying to find a solution to a problem, thinking we need to give people more reasons to come to Tallahassee to enjoy a football game. And most hotels in town have two night minimums and we wanted to give them a Friday night experience. So we don't focus on the game day experience, we focus on the game weekend experience. Preparations for the tailgate start in the beginning of the year, so every band can be scheduled to perform when needed. Everything has to be precise for fans to enjoy the entire week-long Seminole football experience. We've had a great track record of the acts that have come through here. A lot of them come here and within months or weeks they become big names that everyone knows. So this is kind of the place where everybody comes to see the future stars of tomorrow. The Knowles have suffered some tough losses this year, starting with the loss of quarterback DeAndre Francois for the season. And now the team is unranked for the first time since 2011. However, that hasn't stopped anyone from maintaining their Spearham winning attitude. The fans are as strong as ever, anticipating the team will finish the season strong with another winning record. For years, the block party has welcomed fans of all ages to show their no pride and Madison Social is no stranger to Epic Friday Nights. So we've been part of it since the beginning to kind of bring the Friday Night Block Party down here to Madison Street, to College Town. So we've been working on everything from the logistics of incorporating all the vendors here in College Town, marketing the event that it's moved down here to College Town, as well as really integral in setting up all of the uh, tents and the food vendors and the sponsor tents that you see out here on the street today. The Friday night block party is essential in creating a culture of winning. The team needs everyone's support, and this is a place where you party Seminole style like nowhere else. Oh, it's just awesome. It just brings everyone together before the big game, you know? This town's itching for some uh, FSU excitement, and this is exactly what we're bringing. I think what the Friday night block party brings is just something new and exciting to this area. You can you know, drink a beer, eat some food, watch some live music, and have Dope Campbell right there in the background. This is a place where fans can be themselves before game day. Bring your gear, your love, and your spirit to the Friday night block party. I'm Travis Rodney with the Jimbo Fisher Show.
love my team. We're going to fight all the way. The Look Ahead is presented by Florida Farm Bureau Insurance. Register to win a football fantasy experience at KnollsContest.com. Welcome back, Coach. This week you get Louisville and Lamar Jackson. I mean, he's a human highlight film. I realize there's 21 other guys out there that start for Louisville, but he's been a special player for him. He has been. I mean, and, and because he's one of the few guys you ever coached against that when you do it right, most guys, if you do it right, you still can force them to do some things. You can't force I mean, his athletics, athleticism, to create with his legs or even with his strong arm or get a ball off or jump or run or, I mean, just whatever it may be, he's just so dynamic. I yeah. mean, so dynamic. And, and Bobby's a great coach. Even though they, you know, they've, they've lost quite a few games this year too, but at the same time, every game's been a one-possession game, kind of like us. Their season's been very similar to ours in a lot of different ways. And Bobby does a great job. He's dynamic, but on defense, they got players that are athletic, they're kicking game. I mean, you know, they've been in some battles. And, uh, but that guy can – he changed his numbers on the scoreboard quickly. Yeah, no question about it. And uh, he and his Louisville teammates will be in Tallahassee this weekend, 12 noon kick at Doe Campbell Stadium. We'll come back and uh, wrap up this week's edition of the Jimbo Fisher. Welcome into Garnet and Gold Grub, presented by Tico People's Gas. I'm Catherine Phillips, alongside Chef Thomas Gilbert. He's the executive chef of residential dining here on the campus of Florida State, and he's going to walk us through a delicious game day meal using natural gas. Chef, what do you have for us today? Well, today what we're going to do is a pan-seared Australian lamb, okay. and that's going to be in a rosemary demi. Okay. So the lamb itself is marinated with sun-dried tomatoes, brown sugar, bourbon, and rosemary. Okay. okay, so what we're gonna do is we are just gonna sear that off. So how long did you and marinate the lamb for? That lamb ideally should marinate overnight. Okay. So all we're looking to do right now is sear off the lamb, capturing a lot of that flavor. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop it in the oven for about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Now in the back here, what we have is our beef stock that we make in-house. All right, so from its raw form to get to this point here, which you can see is very gelatinous and reduced, takes about 24 to 48 hours. Now you have the visible flame using natural gas. What's the advantage of that? Well, not only is it cost efficient, but there's no residual that will go back onto the meat. It's a lot easier for me to control my temperatures and really concentrate on how high, how low I want this to cook. And when you're doing something like this, where you've got a high fat content in the meat, if it cooks any longer than that, it would really, really burn. Right. So now that we've flipped this over, we're gonna pop this down here in the oven. And that will start on our demi. What we're going to do, a little olive oil, and then this is our demi reduction. That'll take about a minute, just let that cook down on its own. The New Zealand lambs and the Australian lambs are going to have more of a, uh, like an earthy kind of tone to them, so we don't want to add too much more of that to it, and that's where the, rose, the uh, raspberries come in. This will smoothen it out and add a sweetness to it. So let's turn this heat up just a little bit more. You see the raspberries will start to break down now. When the sauce finishes, it'll take on more of a burgundy color. So you just mix it until it has a smooth consistency? That's it. It won't ever be perfectly smooth unless you were to take it and put it through a food processor or some sort of a blender, but you want it to break down enough so it'll get some of that natural sugar to release back in it and add the sweetness, and that's ideally what we're looking for. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and pour that right into our serving vessel. That'll be our dipping sauce for our lamb. So this is just very simple. We'll just take it and we'll cut them right along the bone. So you want them to kind of maintain that nice little pinkish inside, rare to a medium rare. And that is it, raspberry lamb chops. We'll finish it with a little salt wow. and pepper. That was so simple. This is your first time trying lamb? I've never had lamb. All right, let's make it count. <laughs> I think that was a good lamb to start with. <laughs> <laughs> For full details on this recipe and more information on how you can incorporate natural gas at home, at your business, or at your next tailgate event, go to peoplesgas.com slash cooking. Coach, you get back at it uh, this week and get ready for Louisville. And uh, how significant is it just in terms of confidence to be playing off of a win this week? Oh, it's you? huge. I mean, knowing that you can do it and how hard it was. And guys, you know, I heard our kids say after, man, I forgot. winning is so, you know, so hard. 
just like it is. I mean, and you, you appreciate it, and you know you have to go to work, and there's some things we left on the table, but at the same time, our kids are working hard. We'll continue to coach them, get them better, and uh, but you're, you know you can do it, and you're going to have to have that confidence because Louisville's a very good football team. We'll have a look back at uh, the game with Louisville next week right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. We'll see you then. This has been the Jimbo Fisher Show, brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over $30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Taste the feeling. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe.